Sirach chapter 43 verse 30 it says when he glorify Yahweh Bashanyasha exalt him as much as he can for even yet will he far exceed and when he exalt him put forth all your strength and be not weary for he can never go far enough man. but I would like to say Shalom, call on him, lie, Yahweh, Shem El Shai. What's going with the bonus of LZG of Mass? Honest, you, Akim, is pushing his word week in and week out. Peace and bless you, brothers and sisters that listen, hold for the lect, man. Call on him, lie, Yahweh, Shem El Shai. Start without that precept, Sirach 43 and 30. Read it again. This is when he glorified Yahweh, Shem El Shai, and exalt him, because that's what we do, man. We exalt, man. Right? Yahweh, Shem El Shai, man. We exalt Yahweh Shai, man. Exalt Yahweh forgiveness, Yahweh Shai. All right, which represents grace and mercy. All right, it says as much as he can. Praise that's 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 in the commandments. Love the heavenly Father with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy strength, and all thy might, man. Right, for when he yet when he go far exceed, and when he exalts him, put forth all your strength, and that's what we're doing. Okay, put forth all our strength into this thing, man, because that's what we're called to do as Israelite men, prophets and priests. And be not weary, especially not now, man. The prophecy is kicking up. So we got to kick it up another notch. The scripture says, be not weary and well-doing. All right, because Yahweh Bashim El Shah is going to save us and he's going to reward us if we endure. For you can never go far enough. You can never praise your heart by Shemel Shah far enough, man. And as we're doing this lesson, the Feast of Tabernacles coming to an end. So we do a, you know, did a video on it going into the High Holy Day. And uh, also, you know, the main prayer that Solomon said, you know, if they will praise us, praise him in the land of our captivity, that he would turn it back, that he will come and save us, man. Hell, he even said in that same prayer, if all Israel was to turn towards the east, every single Israelite, and pray to Yahweh Bashim El Shah, that he would save us today. But obviously, only the elect is going to call upon his name, man. Matter of fact, let me read what King David said, Psalms 119. Uh, let's see, there's a Psalms 119. To, uh, Okay, and the way may you praise Yahweh by Shemel Shah is the work. But I'm going to um, read that in a minute. Let me get Psalms 119, verse, I think it's 169. I read this in a long time. A long chapter in the Bible. Psalms 119, verse 169. It says, Let my cry come near before thee. All right? <laughs> or our prayer, O Yahweh by Shemel Shah, give me understanding according to thy word, man. Okay? That's why we always pray for the Rakak Wadash, which is the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right? Let my supplication come before thee, deliver me according to thy word, man. And Yahweh Bashim al Shah said that. And we'll call upon him in the day of trouble that he would save us. Okay? King David is always praising Yahweh Bashim al Shah, man. That's why he's the king of Israel forever. Underneath Yahweh Shah. It says, My lips shall utter praise. When thou hast taught me thy statutes, which we've been taught the statutes, the law, statutes, and commandments, we've been taught I identity again. We've been taught how to worship Yahweh Bashim El Shah in sincerity and truth. Because these religions, that's not how you worship Yahweh Bashim El Shah, man. That's not the rivers of living water, man. It says, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness, man. Okay? All his commandments are righteousness. And that's how you get closer to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? And he said, what? My lips shall utter praise. You see? Because, oh, let me get that Hosea. And one in Hebrews. See? That's the top way you praise him, man. Yeah, we pray. Keep the commandments. But the main thing is also doing this work, man. I'm going to get that in a minute. But let me get Hosea 14, verse 2. It says, let's start from one, Hosea 14 and 1. Oh, man. 
Hosea 14 and 1, O Israel, return unto Yahweh Basham Yahshah. And this is what we tell Israel every week we go out there, man. To return to Yahweh Basham Yahshah, man. Come back, man. Right? Put off the old, man. Repent. Be born again. Okay? So you can receive that grace and mercy and you can be saved from the great indignation. Thy power, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Of course, due to sin, we fell. Right? Due to sin, the kingdoms were split. And due to sin, we got led into captivity. Okay? Take with take with you words and turn to Yahweh Bashem Shah. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. And he did do that. Well, only for the elect right now. But yes, all Israel as well. But only the elect right now through Yahweh Shah, man. All right? Our iniquity has been taken away. It was nailed to the cross. All right? So we will render the calves of our lips. You see? Sacrifices is what? With our lips, man. Not in times past with the goats and the lambs and the bullocks and the rams. Okay? Because Israel ran those traditions into the ground. Now it's through what? Through our lips. That's our sacrifice. All right? Preaching the truth, man. The doctrine. All right? Sealing the elect. Let me get Hebrews 13 and 12. Paul mentioned that as well. Hebrews 13 and 12, man. So, you know, we praising Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, rehearsing the righteous acts, and above all, doing the work, man. Whatever your lot may be, right? Paul said what? Hebrews 13 and 12. It says, um, Wherefore Yahweh Shai also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us therefore go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For he here we have no continuous city, but we seek one to come. I, yeah, that's, our, that's what we're working for. Right, this is not our rest. It says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to the Most High continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Oh, man. That cuts it cuts a particular camp okay calling on um uh these these strange names man okay his name is yahweh and the son's name is yahweh shad man but the scripture says let us offer the sacrifice of praise to the most high continually okay all the time that is the fruit of our lips so this ministry is important man that's the way we're gonna get up out of here see that's the only reason why the most high been um, <laughs> got us on the planet Earth, man. Okay, you're supposed to praise your Creator, man. And that's the reason why we're still alive, man. And that's the reason why we're gonna be granted mercy, man. See, that's why it tells you in the Book of Sirach, seventeen, verse ten. And only the elect is gonna do that. That's what I'm gonna read right now. Sirach, seventeen and ten. You people in these churches, you're not praising Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, man. You're not praising him the right way. Okay? The Most High said in the book of Isaiah, I think it's the 65th chapter, you're smoking his nose. He hates your sacrifice, man. He hates your offering, man. All that hoolering and hollering and jumping down and rolling on the floor, right? And above all, you teach your false doctrine. And that's a great offense. See? But the scripture says in Sirach chapter 17, um, Let's see. Verse 7. Where, wherefore he filled them with knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. Okay. He's going into who? The sons of Adam. All right. Which you know the Israelites today. It says, He set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever. That they might declare his works with understanding. And that's what we're doing. All right. Tobit said that. I'm going to get that precept after this. And the elect, the elect shall praise his holy name. Like we just read in Hebrews, the 13th chapter. You, we're praising his holy name, man. Okay. The scripture says the elect. So only the elect. All right. Is going to praise you. How about Shemiah shall only the elect. Is singing the right song, the right tune, the right doctrine, man. Only the elect, man. And Adarat is out. Lord willing, we are part of that elect, man. Okay, because only the elect is going to be saved. 
See, this whole thing is about the elect, man. I've seen some video about um, people critiquing the Hebrew Israelites and what they have they done for the community. We ain't about the community, man. We don't give us two shits about the black community, man. Okay, this is all about raising up the elect, man. Mosai never said it for us to go out there and to raise up the community, man. Okay? It's all about raising up the elect, man. Coming back to Yahweh Bashem Yahshah, man. That's it, man. And let me read what Tova said, Tova, the 13th chapter. So, man, we're going to keep praising him. We're going to keep fighting. And look, I don't want Ratzaz um, We delivered, man. Yeah, Tova, the 13th chapter. Let's see. This is a beautiful prayer. Tobit 13 and 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing. Which is, this was a very beautiful story. Tobit and his son Tobias. And how the angel uh, uh, Raphael uh, binded that spirit um, that um, previously killed, uh, I think it was the seven bridegrooms that was supposed to tie the knot with Tobias' um, wife Sarah. You see? Before they could officially tie the knot, that evil spirit would kill him. But because Tobit was a righteous man who kept the commandments and had faith in Yahweh Bashem El Shah, he was also extremely charitable as well. Scripture tells you charity covered a multitude of sins. Yahweh Bashem El Shah remembered his sacrifice, man. He remembered him, man. And he delivered his son and he healed his blindness. You see? And we want Yahweh Bashem El Shah to come through for us in the time that's coming, man. That's why it's important to praise him. Okay? Let me read this. Tobit chapter 13 verse 1. It says, Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the Most High that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he have scourge and have mercy. You see? Because the Most High do scourge. And he put us in captivity. And the Most High do test us as well. And it's important to praise him while being in the midst of the fire or the affliction as well, man. You have to, man. Okay, Job said, even though he slay me, I will still serve him, man. It's the attitude we all got to have, right? It says, he leadeth down to hell or the grave, bring it up again. And not is there any that can avoid his hand. Nobody, man. Nobody can avoid his hand. He said the world is in the palm of his hand. It's Sirach chapter 18, verse 1, all right? Confess him before the Gentiles, and that's what we're doing, all right? Ye children of Israel, for ye are scattered us among them. We're scattered. We're brought to the other end of the earth. So we're confessing. All right. There declare his greatness and extol him. Praise him and exalt him before all the living. And that's what we do on them streets. That's what we do on the internet. Right. For he is our Lord and he is the power of our father forever. And he will scourge us for our iniquities. And will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations among whom he have scattered us. For if he turn to him with your whole heart and with your whole mind and deal uprightly before him. You see? Which that's the commandments anyway. Alright? The first commandment. Alright? Then will he turn unto you and will not hide his face from you. Therefore see what he will do with you and confess him with your whole mouth. Praise him, man. Okay, so guys that don't want to call on the name, you're not praising the Lord, man. And you're not confessing it with your whole mouth, man. See, and praise the Lord of might and extol the everlasting king in the land of my captivity. Do I praise him, man. See that? That's mainly the point I wanted to get out. In the land of my captivity, do I praise him? Like Solomon said, did that video on the Feast of Tabernacles, man. Okay. And when we praise you, how about Shemel Shah? Like we said, we're going to get the victory. How the one rots us out, man. We're going to get the victory, man, over our enemies and adversaries and over the beast. See? Is that another precept one again? Let me see. Is a book of Judith? I've read this in a long time, actually. After uh, Judith um, cut off the head of Holy Furnace, which was one of the Assyrian um, army's general. You see? And um, they praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. This was uh, also happening at the same time of being of King Hezekiah. All right, they were all contemporaries: King Hezekiah, Isaiah, uh, Judith, um, Micah. You know, they were all contemporaries, man. 
but um, there was an account after I want to get this I think it's Judith the 13th chapter here we go it says so it said, this is what Judith said Judith chapter 13 let me read a little up this is Judith 13 and 6 it says then she came to the pillar of the bed which was at Holy Furnace head and took down his fa fascion from thence and approached his bed and took hold of the hair of his head and said strengthen me O Lord power of Israel this day and she smote twice upon his neck with all her might and took away his head from him see to cut off his head man all right while he was sleeping it says um we jump down then said Judith the far off go to the watchman at the gate open open now the gate the most high even our powers with us to show us his power yet in Jerusalem and his forces against the enemy and he hath even done this day now when the men of our, of her city heard her voice they made haste to go down to the gate of their city and they called the elders of the city and when they ran all together both small and great for it was strange unto them that she was to come so they opened the gate and received them and made a fire for a light and stood round about them then she said to them with a loud voice praise praise the most high praise the most high i say for he have not taken away his mercy from the house of israel but have destroyed our enemies by mine hands this night so she took the head out of the bag and showed it and said unto them behold the head of holy furnace the chief captain of the army of Ashur, the Assyrians. And behold the canopy wherein he did lie in his drunkenness, and the Lord hath smitten him by the hand of a woman. And as the Lord liveth, who hath kept me in the way that I wept my countenance, hath deceived him to his destruction. See, <laughs> he fell for her beauty, man. Yet hath he not committed sin with me to defile and shame me. Then all the people were wonderfully astonished and bowed themselves and worshipped the Most High, and said with one accord, Blessed be thou, O our power, who hast this day brought to naught the enemies of thy people. All right. Then Uzziah said unto her, O daughter, blessed art thou of the most high power above all the women upon the earth. And blessed be the Lord power which have created the heavens and the earth, man, which have directed thee to cutting the head off of the chief of our enemies. You see? Let me, let me read on down to verse 19. For this thy confidence shall not depart from the heart of men, which remember the power of the Most High forever, man. And that's the point. It says, And the Most High turn these things to thee for a perpetual praise, to visit thee in good things, because thou hast not spared the life of the affliction of our nation. All right? It says, But has revenged our ruin, walking straight away before our power. And all the people said, So be it, so be it. But the point I want to get out is like they said, man, praise the most high, man, which have created the heavens and the earth, which have directed thee. All right. And also, um, um, people said in verse 17, blessed be thou, O our power, which have this day brought to naught the enemies of thy people, man. And this is going to happen again. Okay. It tells you that Revelation of 15 chapter, man. All right, but he points us to praise Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, and that's why these stories are written. You know, you read about like this account here in Judith, you read about uh, the additions of Esther, got the victory over Haman, an Edomite. You read about in during the time of the Maccabees, Judas Maccabees was always praising Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, man, for getting the victory over the Greeks, man, and the different nations and the Assyrians that were round about us at the time. All right, and his different brothers after him. You had Jonathan, and then you had Simon, man. Okay, and they made a semi-independent from the Greeks, but they always kept praying the Hasmonean dynasty. But they always kept praising Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, man. And you know we doing the same, man. The elect, man. I don't rot this off, of course, man. All right. So like I said, man, we gonna keep praising Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, and I don't rot this off. We can be delivered and saved, man. With that, I'm gonna say shalom.